Well, this is really interesting because I talk about this in my songwriting guitar lab all the time. I'm always trying to get my students to figure out, like, be conscious of your process and what turns it on and what turns it off or what enhances yeah. it or helps you find ideas. And I'm always fascinated by how anybody else writes. And I sometimes yeah. try to write the way they're writing if I haven't tried that particular approach, you know, but I've often sat around with a guitar and then for some reason you just start mumbling things and saying stuff and you get attached to a vowel sound. So you go, Oh, that has to be right there. Oh, you know, <laughs> or whoa, or <laughs> snow or something like, you know, it's just like yeah, 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 it definitely yeah, yeah. one thing. And then I don't know what I'm talking about, but it evolves. And some of that just is such a lovely surprise and it's fun. Yeah. But, you know, when I watched that movie, De Lovely, with um, about the story of Cole Porter, I was oh. so I was so impressed with his songwriting, Cole Porter's songwriting. I was like, "Oh my God, what am I doing?" You know, like his lyrics make so much sense. His songs are so gorgeous. He's so succinct. He just says exactly what he needs to say, and and they fit the puzzle, and they rhyme, and they're just like. Ooh, like bullseye, you know, like I just go. I really want to get into Cole Porter. Like, where do you yeah. think I should start? I don't know. I, I can't even run a bunch of titles off my head, you know, to say, oh, these are my favorite songs of his. Like, they were just scattered in the movie in such a delicious way. And what was impressive was Kevin Klein was the actor. Oh, he, I love that guy. You would swear he was a musician. And he was wow. so successful. He was so rich. He had these gigantic eight and 10 foot baby, not baby grand, full grand pianos all over his house. One out by the swimming pool, one in his bedroom, one in the kitchen, one in the foyer, one in the parlor, one in the guest room. It was like, no matter where he was, he could, and they were always in tune and he'd sit down and just create the most amazing things. You're like, you feel like the guy's sitting there writing. I was just like watching another macker, you know, like watching another creator was just so great. And um, I ended up picking up my guitar, waiting for something to render down here. And I wrote this little chord melody and I called it December. And when my cousin heard it, he said, you should call it in December because it's boo, 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 boo. And I wrote this little chord melody and I thought, wow, you were inspired by this Cole Porter because this sounds like a, a standard. So then when I was going to bed that night, I thought I would love to hear this with a band. So the next day I recorded all the parts and played drums and stuff and made it sound like a band tune. And then because he said in December, I thought I should make it, I should write a lyric about it, make it a love song, change the key and make it sound like a James Taylor tune. Now, usually the song comes first and then you make an instrumental version of it. Right. You know, but mine came out with a little instrumental guitar first. So I have a little playlist on YouTube called in December and three tiny, really short versions of the same song that I've released that I love, but that was inspired by Cole Porter. But uh, I like looking at people's lyrics too. So like Paul McCartney can write a song about anything. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, out in Europe, there's a slide with, with sandbags. Is that what he got it from? That's what he wrote it about. Oh. Right. So when he says, when I get to the bottom, I go back to the top of the slide where I turn and I stop and I turn and I go for a ride and I get to the bottom and I see you again. That's what he's talking about. <laughs> he's literally saying, when I get to the top, I go back to the top of the slide and you, you sit down on this thing and you just slide all the way down. And I just thought that is just brilliant. You know, so yeah. I was thinking that month that I was trying to write a lot of songs, like what can I write about and describe and I remembered that a friend of mine said, let's go up the ski lift because neither of us ski, but we've always wanted to go on one of those sky lift things. Yeah. And so I wrote a song about that. And that's on the new album. That was um, when the chair comes round, we'll set ourselves down and hope the turn doesn't catch us funny. We will lift off the oh, ground. Cool. Grateful we found the perfect day. So warm and sunny. Let me fly away with you. And I started looking up all these things where people were hang gliding because I was looking for words and phrases. And they were saying, like, it's just a, an amazing feeling when your body lifts off the ground. And I thought, that's good. And I, like, I'm always looking for yeah. phrases just like you did with the movie. Yeah. A lot of people think 
well, I should come up with some kind of a message or some kind of a thing where um, uh, it's a it's a message or it's a universal something that people would love to hear. What what can I do that would be good for for everybody or or like I could get stumped if someone says write something for the world. Like what does the world need to hear now? Yeah. <laughs> I've always said, I don't want to be mayor. Like I can't decide these things for everybody. I only know what works for me, you know, like, yeah, so yeah. Uh, that could stump me. But like you said, if you bring it into a personal way and then just actually be honest with it, the personal becomes universal because we're yeah. all human. We all deal with the same monkey mind and we all have to deal with the same problems. Right. So it actually works out pretty well. And, um, I had a student once who said, well, I'm not very inspired. There's nothing to write about in Boston. I was like, there's infinite things to write about just in this classroom, let alone Boston. I mean, you know, and Ringo always says, you know, if you're not inspired, open your eyes, you know, so I do want to see more and I need more perspective. But you know what I've found too, is that before when I was much younger, I was just playing guitar constantly. I always had a million guitar ideas and I didn't have a lot of word ideas. So that free association and um, object writing really helps. So sometimes they give you an assignment, like in a lyric class where they'll say, pick an object, go for 15 minutes, just write anything you can think of about your finger, (laughs) about this little tripod about a window right and sometimes i'm like i don't even feel like doing it you know and i would make myself do these things even on my own and i went all right window 15 minutes i'll see what what can i say and i remember saying i'll pretend someone's standing outside because one of my windows was ground level and if they were standing outside talking to me i could say i could see them but it's like I can see through, I can see the window, I can see you, I can't touch you, but you can see me, I can almost hear you. And I'm just scribbling all this nonsense. And then a couple of months later, I'm playing with a guitar idea going, do I have any words? Because I love this thing. And I'm looking and I go back to this thing and I see the 15 minutes of scribble on window and I'm like, I knew for sure this would never turn into anything. You know, this was just stupid. But at least I played with words, good for me, right? And I start singing. I can see through, (laughs) I can see you, I can't touch you, but you can see me, I can almost hear you. And then I'm like, what else did I say? What's this about? What's a good chorus? And I had loved that movie, The Truman Show. Yeah. See that with... uh, Yeah, yeah, I love that movie too. Yeah, it's one of my favorite movies. And right in the middle there, she's wearing that button that says, how's it going to end? All right. And I had written that in my word book because I thought that's a big question. How am I going to end? How are my family going to end? How are my siblings going to end? How is anything going to end? You know, when will I ever retire from Berkeley? How's that going to end? (laughs) There's a million questions, right? How's that going to how's it going to end? So I put that in the chorus. How's it going to end? And I wrote I called the song. How's it going to end? And it came out of a whole bunch of very uninspiring couple of steps to just hope to, and then the whole thing was eureka oh my god i want to do this again so yeah. then i started realizing if i play with words i have words if i play with chords i have chords if i play with a bass i have a bass idea if i you know and sometimes i'm playing drums and background vocals come into my head and i go i got to go record those right now you know like you say you get up and walk or you do something else your brain is always ready to find things for you and figure stuff out. Even things that feel way off in the future, you know, like how can I get a better record deal or how can I get a song in a movie or how can I get a, your brain goes, I'll get back to you on that. And the universe and law of attraction and all those fun things start lining up what they call the cooperative components to help things happen. If you just go about your life and enjoy what you're doing and, get excited by the magic that happens in life. I mean, most of the best things that have ever happened in my life, I have no idea how they happened. I'd have to watch the movie and see the behind the scenes of who was doing what to pull the strings for me, you know? Because I felt like they weren't of my doing. Yeah, that's so true. 
They're just of my dreaming and wishing. And so like, I, I don't want to wait or waste time being sad about things or think that my life isn't good enough just because X, Y, and Z isn't in it. It's like everything I've ever wished for, I have. I just need new wishes. I need new desires. It's just time to, to make, make new plans or because you know, it's delicious to have a fun thing to look forward to, you know, as long as I don't yeah. attach longing and aching over it. It's kind of fun to think this could happen, you know, and find ways to keep yourself excited. So it's like, yeah, you know, like we've said before, like taking care of that inner child that is looking for, I know there's more and this isn't it. Okay. So what, what am I looking for? You know, one time, um, you know, I have very limited piano experience even though I've been dabbling with a nice piano for probably a decade now. <laughs> um, my friend said, why don't you play with fifths? You know how they say, put your hands in the five finger position. Those outside intervals are fifths. <clears throat> and she said, just put your fingers anywhere and play with the fifths. Let's see if I can do this without uh, causing havoc. can't see it but it's here so you put your fingers in any of those five finger positions and just and when you find something you like she said write them down and I have a phone full of memos with all these little things like or uh, and then occasionally you hear me trying to put them together Was it uh and so I'm playing with fifths, playing with fifths for weeks, and then I'm going, how am I gonna remember these to be able to finger them? You know, I'm like, oh, it's like not easy for me to remember this garbage on piano as it is on guitar because the guitar you grab a shape and it's there now i'm like all 10 fingers have to remember something or these outside fingers have to remember something this is too big an instrument you know <laughs> and so i have these fifths in my ears for weeks and i'm talking to the same friend on the phone and she says um i don't think your porch is coming out too well because i was having the porch renovated it's like something's wrong she's like I i'm feeling a breeze and i can see the sunlight coming through and so i talked to the <laughs> I talked to the contractor. I said, um, what's going on with that? He's like, uh, yeah, I haven't uh, finished. Uh, oh, what does he call it? Um, the, the finishing uh, pieces. And I haven't caulked and I haven't, you know. And so I'm telling her all the steps he has left to do. And I said, well, so that explains this guy. He'll be back on Thursday to, to finish the trim and the caulking. And, the, and she went, did you hear what you just said? You said that explains the sky. That's a great title. That should be the title of an album or something. I'm like, no, it's a title of a song. So I go walking with the dogs and I'm singing, that explains the sky, that explains the sky. How many different melodies can I come with? with, with that explains the sky, you know. And I came up with, um, that explains the sky. I'm like, oh my God. God, like, I love this. This sounds like Stevie Wonder. I have to remember this. And I don't have my phone. I'm like a mile away from home, just singing and singing with the dogs, <laughs> trying to remember it, trying to remember it. And I get to my phone and I go, I hope this fits one of my fifths. And I, I still have the memo saying that, right? And it's a half step down from my favorite combination of fifths. I'm like, yes, like the brain put it together, you know? It was so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just it. This is the magic in our lives, the creating of the songs. This is the funnest part because we're playing with magic. We don't know where this stuff comes from, you know, and this is what makes our lives worth living. It's so fun to be us to find these things. So uh, that explains the sky. Oh, wow, that's so good. Oh, oh. Love that. And, and, it came, <laughs> and it came 
from tiny little stupid play with fifths and uh, a conversation about my porch. And like you say, just real life, just little, little things happening. Like, yeah. yes. you know, you just have to be patient with the little parts. But I didn't even know what explained the sky. You know, it's like yeah, that, that's not the point. That's not even the point, is it? <laughs> no, not yet. You know, so then you start working on the lyrics and you find something that does explain the sky. I mean, you know, it's yeah. just like so that explains the sky. How's it going to end? Uh, let me fly away with you. Like some of those are just almost accidental in a way, you know, but desiring to write songs, desiring to find a place to start and desiring to find a way in. Like to me, that creative process it feels like another room to play in. It feels like there's a veil, yeah. a wall, and you got to break through the ordinary and come into the magic place. Does it feel like that for you? Yeah, yeah. It feels like, like you know, they say if there's a will, there's a way. Like it feels like that sometimes. Like when you decide you want to do something, even if you don't have your guitar with you or whatever, like some window will open up, and maybe you can, you know, like I did, like watch a movie or whatever, like, or your construction guy. <laughs> yeah. You, you like Kevin Klein. So do you remember uh, passion fish? Passion fish. Yeah. I think he was in that film passion fish too. No, you don't mean a fish called Wanda. Uh, well, there's two. There was one called passion fish and one called a fish called Wanda. I think. Yeah, I don't know the passion fish one. I think. Yeah. Because, uh, I was in the middle of writing a song and I didn't know what to say in the chorus. I was like, wrap my whatever around you. Like, I didn't know what to say. Wrap my And so I'm going out with another friend to go see a movie one day in the eighties. And I'm going, well, what movie are we going to see? And she said, passion fish, <laughs> wrap my passion around you. <laughs> so I put that in a song called loyal heart, you know, and it was like, it's so easy and so stupid. You're like, you couldn't think of the word of passion. No, I just didn't think of it, it but the, the title helped me. <laughs> so the playfulness of it and not being too serious. I mean, I could, that's what I meant uh, a couple of weeks ago when I was saying, pretend you have a publicist who's always framing everything to make you yeah. look good. I had uh, people in my life in my younger days that would say to me, like, you're always looking to see what you can get out of things. Like you're so selfish. But if you don't have this perspective of what's in it for me, that's almost like you don't belong there. You know, like, why am I going here? It would be nice to get some song ideas. It would be nice to elevate my senses about this particular artist or go to this museum or whatever. It's like, I'm going there to be enriched. I'm going there for, for food. And that's why a lot of music today doesn't feed me. It doesn't really touch my soul and get into a place that it's like, not that I think it's good or bad. It's just, it doesn't feed me and I have to know what mood I'm in. I can listen and check out anything, but if I'm hungry, I need food. I need to listen to something that's going to reach me. And uh, maybe that's an unnecessary pressure to put on someone else's art, but you have to know what works for you and what doesn't. And that's not a selfish thing. So like, just try to start practicing, not thinking of anything that you're doing as a selfish thing or as a, problem thing there's always something wrong with me and i'm just trying to get through this or come up with something good like why not look at it like you're doing everything right and that you're a super cool happy love thing that just people love to be around that you're a cool creative guy and you're already you know whoever you're intending to be and, and wishing to grow up into like be that person now who is that guy who is that f future gem you know what does he do that this gem doesn't do? Can't you start doing that? Can't you start wearing those clothes or being that guy or going to those places or, you know what I mean? Like yeah. figure out what that stuff is. That's what all these life coach people would say. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, Jack Canfield is another fantastic life coach. And he has this exercise in his book where he says he gets together with his friends and they have a party every year and they're projecting who they are five years from now. They're wearing those clothes that they're going to wear five years from now. They have that money. They're telling those stories about their mansion or their yacht or their new recording studio or whatever they're doing. And it hasn't happened yet, but they're acting it and living it and feeling it and being it for like a whole night or a whole weekend getaway or something. 
And five years from now, most of those people accomplish those things. So sometimes artists are so sensitive and so honest that they're like, yeah, but I don't feel like a Superman today. I don't feel like a hero. I don't feel like a beetle. I feel like a schmuck. I feel like a jerk. I feel like a pretender. I feel like a an imposter or I'm not good enough or I'm still learning such and such. I'm not really there yet. Or I like we, we're so honest. It's like when the parents used to shine a light on you when you were a kid, like, tell the truth. What have you been doing? You're like, oh, you know, and so we're always telling the truth to ourselves. And it's like, but where's the room for dreaming then? You know, how do you how do you get out of where you are when you're that like serious about it that, that like there's no room for expansion? You know, I don't think it's gobbledygook and I don't think it's lying to yourself. I think it's freedom. I think it's opening the doors to more creativity and more fun. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Because I could say, well, you know, blah, 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 and put myself down and my friends will turn around and go, what? You know, like even when Pat Metheny called me a great guitar player to my face, I wanted to say, oh, no, you're the great guitar player. I'm, a, I'm like <laughs> biting my tongue. I'm like, you don't tell Pat Metheny is wrong. He's sitting in your living room. You're like, Ugh. and my friends are like, oh. You didn't believe it when we told you you were a great guitar player. You only believe it when <laughs> Pat Metheny tells you. And it's like, well, there's a little bit more weight there. He's a player. <laughs> he knows, you know, like, it's like, like upsetting everybody, you know. And then we take it a step further. Oh, yeah, being a great guitar player, that and 50 cents can't even get you on the subway. You know, like, so then we put that down, too. So it's like you get yourself coming and going, you know, and that yeah. doesn't yield well for creativity you know no it doesn't i mean i've written a lot of sad songs i can write write a lot of sad songs about stuff like that but it doesn't make any sense uh to to live there you know and to stay there too long whereas if you gently just play with words like writing about a window and maybe the song doesn't even turn out to be about a window like that one didn't turn out to be about a window or one time i was writing about a painting that my brother had done and I was talking about it being framed and some pictures are spoken about and some are hung in museums and some artists get incredible notoriety and some others never amount to anything and all this kind of stuff. And then months later, I was writing a love song, trying to write a love song on Valentine's Day. And I said something like, um, I want to be the picture in your frame. And that was from my gobbledygook about the painting. And I was saying shades of many colors, but then I turned it around and said shades of many ways about you framed unspoken brought to love. And I went, Oh my God, it sounds like I'm this poet about love's words, you know, and, and really I was talking about a painting, you know? So that's, that's a reason to do some of those object writing things. I can write about a lamp, but then three weeks from now you hear a phrase and you turn it around and it's actually a song about an elephant or or piano or like it, you can turn it into anything. Yeah. And then the free association is really good because you can just scribble because it's fun. I love paper and pens, especially fountain pens and good flowing ink on smooth paper. And I could just write all day about nothing, or I could fill my journals full of stuff. And um, again, I don't look at it right away because I know it's just gobbledygook. But it turns out to be interesting. Did I show you that one about that song sometimes? This one student didn't do paragraphs of blurbs. He actually did single words separated by commas. And I was like, what? What are you doing? He read this stupid thing just about as dumb as this. I'll show you. Because then he read his lyric. We went, ooh. And then he played a song. We went, I a song like that and we all went home and did it and this is it belly riddle finagle triangle hip foot stone bark rent phase trip like it means nothing it's just playing with words right so i'm sitting in my backyard one day and i have this really cool progression and i just loved it she's grabbing a guitar folks She's walking around the room and looking for the capo, trying to show the demonstration of what this was. 
talking with the Beatle accent, trying to have fun. I'm already having fun. I was watching an Adrian Ballou uh, video and he's like, you know, if you want to experiment with alternate tunings, you can just change one string. Yeah. Oh, that guy's nice, mom. So I change one string, I throw the capo on, I'm in the backyard, I'm feeling miserable because I have a cold. I had written the blurb in April, but then I'm playing with the guitar. I'm like, oh my God, where's my word book? Where is my freaking word book? And I have a cold and I'm looking through this page and I see the words beyond talk right here. And I said, beyond talk, I am tired and needing this change because we were about to change semester. Uh -huh. So I said, beyond talk. And I finished the thought because of my brain took it beyond talk. I'm tired and needing a change. I have a cold. I don't feel good. So then I see star filled ceiling and I say, behind lights where my star filled ceiling remains. Because I had those fake stars on my ceiling. I had written star filled ceiling. So I said, behind lights. So then I thought, wait a minute beyond behind these these two syllable words that start with B. yeah what else can i say beware behave believe let me start a sentence just throw a word at me and i can think of another sentence i'm sitting outside I'm beneath clouds where a smile can surrender this frown because i'm all sad and feeling stupid you know and then i say I'm between thoughts when I fall to despair hit the ground. That's like my favorite line I've ever written. So because good. there's like all these moments in between life and thoughts and feelings where it's just like, if I have the wrong thought, I can just hit the ground. And if I think the right thought, I can pick myself up. It's like, oh, I'm like a yo-yo all day long, right? So then I say, in the grasping for me word puzzle was in the list puzzle the riddle spin round and round and then at that time something i used to say to myself all the time was sometimes life takes all day because i would rather be writing songs and playing in my studio but i got to do the laundry i got to go food shopping i got you know like so sometimes life takes all day Soon, but you get the idea, you know, and it was just again because this kid did single words separated by commas. We all wanted to go home and do that. And I honestly, I've got a book this thick filled with junk, and I just look through for stuff. And there's a woman called Susan G. Wooldridge who wrote a book called Poem Crazy, and she said exactly this kind of thing you can play with words like they're blocks, just take words and put them anywhere, and just try to make sentences and stuff. And you're already a step further saying, I want something that means something to me. I'm looking for something to say that's a sentence. That's great. But sometimes you can even back it up and start from even smaller parts and come up with something super meaningful because the brain is always going to make sense out of chaos. That's its job, you know? And she makes word bags, bags of nouns, bags of adjectives, bags of adverbs, bags of verbs, whatever. And she just takes words out randomly and writes poems. I've never done that, but that's what this junk is. You know, it's like just, it's fodder. It's, it's seeds. What seeds can I germinate and see if I can get anything to grow? And, um, you know, not being afraid of the parts, not being afraid of, I don't know where to start, finding a way to start searching for that something to start with it's just so much fun
So yeah, those three or four that I mentioned are out in the world, fun, but I love telling the stories of those because you know Yeah, I could listen to this all day. Like this is this is my absolute favorite bit about the whole thing, really. Magic. <laughs> That's why I love watching all these um, documentaries and stuff about artists just walking around living. It's like, how do you live? How do you think? How do your ideas come? You know? Yeah. And I usually buy all these books on creativity. And they're so boring. They're so, I don't know. They just don't tell me much, you know? But when I uh, hear something that's really exciting, like a couple of times Rick Rubin said some good things in his books, I thought, better get this book and, and start underlining stuff because it's a fun way to put words to the thing we do naturally that we can't even express or explain yeah. how we do it. It's fun to do it on purpose and to explain it and to get it out and to do it again and again, you know, that's what keeps us alive. Yeah. Right. Well, then you get to a certain point and there's like a bunch of stuff on the paper and I've, on one side, I put the gobbledygook. On the other side of the book, I try to excerpt, uh, yeah. piece it together and make lyrics out of it. And then that can happen all throughout the book. I'm searching for things and putting stuff on this page to make this song. It gets to a certain point where this line is an alternative. That one's an alternative in parentheses. This one could be – it gets too messy. That's when I go to the laptop and start writing out the actual lyric. And I start seeing what's there, and I go, okay, what have I actually said? What is this song about? Have I said what I want to say? And my songs aren't as bizarre as Stevie Nicks, where you don't know what they're about. But I do have some that are in that ballpark. And then there are some that are closer to a Cole Porter, but I don't know. He's just such a genius. I was like, you know. And most of mine are in that playful place of, you really can sing about anything and it doesn't matter too much, you know. <laughs> I just sometimes, like anybody else, like we can see the potential that you might be overlooking because you're so close to it. So another thing you have to do sometimes is the iris in, iris out kind of a thing, like a painter. You're working on something really close, but then you have to back up about 20 feet to see what the depth is really looking like and if yeah. the reverb was enough or, you know, like you, you really need another perspective on your work. Yeah, definitely. And um, sometimes it's really good just to even listen to all your old work and you go, geez, I've been busy. You know, I've been doing cool stuff. I'm, I'm not so shabby after all, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. Like, again, you need to step up your inner opinion of yourself that you've done it. You've done it forever and you continue to do it because it still sparks you, still excites you. So all those things like how to do it on purpose, how to do it more often, how to start something, how to continue, how to finish. Um, like I'll listen in the car to little ideas or like take a walk and listen to the phone memos or in the living room where the stereo is like put something on that isn't finished. Then it stops and you go, oh, wait, I hear the next bass note. You know, like this is where it should go for the bridge, you know, and I go and figure out what's that bass note. Boom, you know, and so sometimes listening in a place that's out of context, like I don't write songs right here in the studio. You, maybe some people would think I would, but sometimes it's just me with an acoustic guitar sitting on the floor, facing the wall, listening to the sound yeah. come back at me, you know, like I was when I was a kid, when things were very simple. It was just me and the song, me and the guitar, you know. Explain to me a little bit about what that place felt like that I was describing that felt like a new creative space to be in. When did you first feel that? And what did that feel like for you? How did you get there? What do you mean? What, like when, I first, when I first wrote a song, I was 10 years old. I didn't sit oh, down and say, I'm going to write a song. I just started writing a song. I don't know how it happened. And I didn't know how to do it again. But I felt like it was magic and that I had gone in through a veil or a doorway and I was in another space. I was in a, in a whole other realm and I loved this yeah. place. I loved how it felt and I wanted to go there again. I think, uh, I don't think I was that young when I wrote my first song. I think I was like 14, some 14, 15. Um, and what I mostly had done uh, up to that point was just Beatles songs really. Cause I, I started on the piano took some um, classical lessons for a year or two. 
And then my dad had this Beatles songbook, mm-hmm. which to this day is my absolute Bible. Like, um, it's gotten really old now, but it's still, it's still intact. Um, it's got pretty much all the songs, like 200 something songs with, um, sometimes they're like, they've simplified the chords, but, yes. um, like the Beatles like, complete book or something. One of those. Yeah. 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 Black. Yeah, it's got like a black uh, cover, but like with a, some psychedelic, colorful thing. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I'll show it to you next time. I don't know where it is now, but yeah, you're yeah. just playing songs that are finished, and then all of a sudden you feel like a songwriter, and something comes out, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, at some point, I knew that I want to make this thing. That's 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 the song, you know, the the song form that was so magical to me, with the with the story and with lovely chords and all that, like everything I picked up from Beatles, I I just wanted to do that. Like, it only came to me when I was a teenager that to like um, to start writing lyrics in a more um, expressive way, I guess. Um, that's when I started writing like songs. Um, and they were all in Turkish. No, actually, I. I did not write in Turkish until I was like 20 something, um, which is, it's a really strange thing for me as well. Like this whole thing, writing in English and Turkish. Because <laughs> um, to me, they're well, like two absolutely separate worlds for some reason. They're not like. Well, then you have your feet in two separate superpower places. <laughs> You know, like again, just look at it as a superpower. I can't do that. You know? Yeah, I, I kind of see it more as a curse. Than I a know that's why I'm that's why I'm ca- calling you out on it because there's a lot of things that we each look at ourselves and we think it's a curse or a weakness or a problem, and really it's our strength. And you just have to see it that way and then use it to your advantage. You know, like Tom Petty hated his voice. He wanted to sound like Sinatra. To him, Sinatra had a voice. He did not. And then finally, at some point, he just said, I just have to do what I do. And I love what he did. Yeah. And that dry vocal right up there, even that song on my um, album that you said you like, where it says, you don't get points for holding back. To me, that was a Tom Petty kind of line. And the key was lower when I recently wrote it. So it was like, you don't get points for holding back. And I was trying to be like, I was like, there's a Tom Petty attitude thing, you know? And yeah. it turned out to be in the, you know, better in the higher key for me. But um, yeah, all these folks, if you interviewed them or you read their books and stuff, you see every little hindrance and every little thing they thought was a problem about themselves, they turned into, you know, their power. That's what makes them them. So all these things that you think are not good enough about you, they're all the things that make you you, and that's what people are going to enjoy when you show them what you do with it, you know? So you just have to take care of it and soothe it and show it in its best light and put it in a song, stick a nice melody on it, and boom. (laughs) It's a bouncing yeah. baby song, and it's and it's awesome. <laughs> I, w- I want to hear some of your songs that are in English too. But uh, I hardly ever listen to words. Words are like the last thing I ever even understand, even when they're in English, because I'm so into the melody and the tracks and the sound of somebody's voice and the effects and the yeah, you know, yeah, what a cool groove! And I'm like, oh, this is great, you know. <laughs> it's like. What's it about? Like, I've only heard it 90 times. I have no idea. 